welcome to the Industry Angel Podcast. We hear from the best business minds across the globe, entrepreneurs, social influencers, marketing mavens, and sales rock stars. We've got them all. Here comes your weekly dose of inspiration with your host, Ian Farah. Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us once again live across Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, LinkedIn. So let us know if you're there. Click share, share it out. Let's feel the love for uh, David, David Virtual. How do I even introduce you? You just like, you, you know what you said, said before, I'll start here. You said that you went to university yeah. and in your, in, your, in your studies, you were doing engineering and that kind of stuff. And you didn't know that you'd be here or if this job was actually a thing. Yeah, I mean, that, that's pretty much the case. Uh, yeah. When I was at university, I thought, I actually thought I was going to go down a particular path, um, maybe become a teacher or a lecturer or mm. something like that in the, in the uh, topic that I was studying at university. But I had no idea that it would uh, venture off into this kind of uh, field. When you, say, it's, it's fascinating. when you say this field, we've just watched a video. Yeah. What was that? You, you can't remember that video? <laughs> it's been a while since you've seen no, it. It's been a while since we've seen that. Uh, it's very difficult to explain, actually. Lots of people say, well, what, what do we do? Um, you know, what does a company do? Yeah. What do we do for them? So the company's DB Show Control and Automation, not a particularly explanatory name, I guess. But we, we provide solutions with technology, really, for the entertainment industry. So it's mainly for theme parks, for mm -hmm. shows, live shows, fixed installation shows, for museums and visitor centers, and that kind of thing. Around the world. Around the world, yeah. So based in South Shields, but uh, Get it. systems around the world. Based downstairs in one Trinity Green. Yeah. You've got a unit, haven't you? Yeah, so we've got two. Actually, we've got two units. Oh, yeah. So we've been in one Trinity Green, I think, since 2014. And we've got one unit downstairs. We've now expanded out into the next unit because we're involved in design of systems, but also in the build of uh, systems. And we just needed physically more space. So we've, we've doubled the size of the, mm -hmm. the manufacturing. Did, so, did you have an office first and then unit? No, we went straight into the unit. Uh, one of the first big projects we did was a really big system build. So we needed office space and we needed a manufacturing unit. So we did it all from that one unit. Plans. Now kind of half of that unit is taking up with office space, but also with testing space. So we have, we have a, a whole array of technology in there that we can test and develop systems with. And now the unit next door is really there just for, for manufacturing. Um, I'm going to come back to that, but you want to let us know, you kind of said that you do you've got these large scale installations. An example of one, maybe? Yeah, so as I say, we, we kind of create uh, solutions with technology for entertainment industry. So if it's theme parks, museums, like live events and shows, what we're doing is we're creating the, the, the control technology that makes that happen. So if it's a theme park ride, um, it's the control and automation technology, software, hardware that makes that ride work. If it's a show, it's the, again, the control technology that really makes the show work. So if there's light, there's laser, uh, there's audio systems, there's water fountain effects, all of those kind of things. Mm -hmm. It's the systems that control those effects, synchronize them together, and bring it into a sort of fully functioning system. I know some of the stuff you do is a little bit sort of top secret. Was there anything you could share that you've done? Yeah, I mean, uh, we've been in business as the company is now since 2012 and we've we've worked on a huge number of projects actually all around the world. A lot in China, uh, some in Korea, Singapore, uh, Orlando and in France and some in the UK as well. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we've, we've worked on all sorts of stuff. So we've got um, Disneyland Paris is one of our uh, really key um, customers. So we've done a lot of work over there where we've done show systems. We've worked in Universal in Beijing and in Poland, mm -hmm. and we work a lot with a company uh, called ECA2, a very big production company doing large-scale fixed installation and multimedia shows. We do the technology. Everyone who's watching now, you just said like Disney, Universal. So everyone, everyone wants to know, on an evening, when it's shut down, can you play on the roller coasters on your own? Well, to be honest, you, yeah, you spend a lot of time going around and around and around. Because <laughs> we're, we're, if you imagine like a like a Universal ride or a Disney ride, mm. they tend to be very AV, audiovisual intensive rides mm. with a lot of projection, a lot of audio, a lot of special effects. So part of the work we do is, is doing the software or the hardware or the control systems that make that work, but then also commissioning the ride with some 
very creative teams who are working for Universal or working for other uh, consulting consulting companies. Um, and that means we need to be on the right. <laughs> Look at that face. <laughs> so you, you know you can spend a lot of time yeah, right, right. Uh, yeah. testing and, and right. uh, over and over and over. Yeah. And over again. So you know when you have like a big roller coaster, um, obviously en engineer, crazy engineering or from a safety point of view and everything. Do the then do you, do you do your bit afterwards then? They don't think about anything that you're gonna do whilst the engineer and, and designer there. Yeah, on a, on a roller coaster type ride that I, I mean we we are part of a, a really big project team. Right. So you have a, a huge creative team that uh, coming up with the designs and the concepts for it. On a line like that, on a roller coaster type line, you have the ride manufacturer who's mm. specifically focused on the ride itself, the yeah. safety of the ride. Um, and then we tend to work with the AV, with the lighting and the special effects. And so we're kind of part of that. But because we're the control system that, that makes everything synchronized together, we tend to have to in, um, interface with everybody. Oh so that's interfacing with the ride yeah. system itself, yeah. uh, interfacing. Um, with all the different aspects, even if it's not part of our kind of scope, we, we tend to have to interface with it, get information from it, and use that to synchronize our elements with the ride. But my point was, was, was in that afterwards, sort of the ride's done, and then you guys kind of work with them to create something. Yeah. So as you say, you go on it and think, oh, right, okay, this might work, this might work. It's, it's a bit of a um, but the ride tends to be physically built um, and put into place, uh, and then we'll do our bit on top of that. But quite often the ride is still in process and being yeah, yeah, tested of course. as part of that. Excellent. I mean, that's the interesting thing. It's, it's we're applying real engineering technologies, mm. the same control and automation technologies that are used in factory automation, really. Yeah. With some custom software and some special things that we've developed, but we're, we're using it in a really creative way. So you're yeah. working with a, a really large team, like I said, a really creative team, um, and it's it's really fun to be part of. Okay. It is, yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to kind of wind it back a bit, um, you know, we kind of dove straight into what you've accomplished now, but what was this first bit like, you know, where did this kick off? Actually, pardon the punks, I know where it kicked off. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. We've chatted about this, go on, tell that story. Yes, yeah, so, oh, that was, that was very good. Yeah, thanks very much. <laughs> uh, no, so when I left university, I studied at Loughborough University and I studied uh, industrial design and technology. So it was a kind of a degree that was a cross between uh, design, a kind of creative design, uh, and then a real, a real engineering uh, degree as well. So we studied a bit of both. And whilst I was there, actually Kevin Keegan, who was at the time, I think, still Newcastle manager, <coughs> uh, brought a project to Loughborough University. I think primarily actually because he knew the university was a, a great engineering mm -hmm. university, but also it's a huge sports, sport, yeah. sports based university. Uh, so he brought a project there for something he was working on, which was uh, developing an interactive uh, football based kind of theme attraction and he wanted to bring somebody from the university to try to come up with a way to engineer and come up with a technological solution for his concept, uh, his creative concept. Mm -hmm. So I worked on that for a short while at the university and then myself and uh, Clive, who was actually my lecturer at the university, uh, we left that, uh, left the university and went and set up uh, working with Kevin. You stole Clive? He stole Clive. Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> You were so. popular then. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we then ended up working up in the northeast, which uh -huh. is where Ken Keegan was living. Cool. And uh, we worked on that for that and various other projects with Kevin for about eight years, something like that. Yeah, wow. um, we built a system out in up in Glasgow and then one out in Dubai and a much smaller one in uh, in the Lake District. So yeah, so we developed that and really as part of doing that we were we were developing new things, coming up with new systems and new bits of software that um, a lot of people weren't really using that much. So we were kind of coming up with interesting ways of, of doing show control and automation systems specifically for that project. Um, Isn't it interesting when you kind of get them paid to test and do R and D and learn and yeah, yeah, it was it was. Fun. I mean, it was a real R and D project. Yeah. Uh, there, there were lots of other interactive vista centers and lots of things like that, but some of the stuff we were trying to do was, was quite interesting, some of it was quite cutting edge with the, um, the video capture stuff that we were doing. So yeah, it was, it was really interesting and obviously there were lots of other people working in theme parks doing that kind of work and we were then overlapping a lot with, 
with that kind of you know, industry and taking in some of the technology that was being used in, in Universal and Disney and integrating that into what we do. And then it was after that that, after we finished those three big projects, I decided that what I wanted to do was the same thing because it's fascinating, it's yeah, an interesting yeah. way of working. But I could see that there was a big opportunity to, yeah. to then work in the same industry, but on different projects uh, elsewhere. And then, is that what you went off on your own? You're a sole trader, weren't you? Yeah, so yeah. I set, set up as a sole trader originally. Uh, it was just myself. I did that for quite a long time, right, actually. Okay. As a consultant uh, kind of thing? Or? Yeah, so we did pretty much as we do now, actually. We do design consulting. Mm -hmm. um, so bringing the expertise that we've got for different projects to assist in the design process of the, the new show and installation and yeah. things like that. And so there's that. Then there's uh, programming of the systems and writing custom software that we do. And then, so that was where we started as, or where I started as a sole trader. And then <coughs> we were being asked much more to build systems. So build custom systems, mm -hmm. build custom electronic systems. And that's when it was clear that we needed to expand more. We needed premises, we needed more people. And that's what we're saying. We there, the Royal We. Yes, the Royal We. <laughs> we got six people now. Right, oh, okay. okay. And when was Full that time. point where you were you using sort of um, you know sort of like outsourcing bits and pieces and yeah. associates and then you yeah uh, exactly so uh, at the time when I was a sole trader we needed more people yeah yeah um, and really I had a big group of friends primarily that we'd worked on yeah, yeah. worked on different projects with around the world yeah and under the kind of umbrella of the DB show control and automation, we yeah. really started to come together as a group that, uh, yeah. that then worked on all of these projects, but under kind of one umbrella. Yeah. And that's when it developed from being a sole trader to being we yeah, yeah, yeah. as a group. So did you uh, did they come on board as employees of the uh, company? Or? Some, some people have. Yeah, uh, yeah. Two guys came in uh, yeah. full time. Everybody else we still work with yeah. day to day. Yeah. Um, but they all work in their own field. It, it's a, an industry where you have a lot of kind of freelance expertise. Yes, of course. Yeah. Um, you know, we've, we've got a guy who, who does a lot of audio work for us, but he's a rock and roll guy, so he goes off on tour and, and does yeah. you know, big concerts and so on. We've got a, a, another guy, Rob, who's a, a real expert and specialist in video systems, right. but he's a, his own entity yeah, yeah, yeah. who works with us a lot on projects. Yeah. And that's quite nice because you can bring in the real expertise mm. um, and use the experience of these people as and when you need it. Yeah. Uh, so we're, we're never kind of going out trying to work on a project without the real knowledge. We've yeah. got a real, a huge uh, knowledge base to, to sort of draw on. It's really interesting like you draw on that knowledge because the guy, the rock and roll guy, will probably bring in ideas that he's seen from the things that he does so yeah. you know if he's purely working with you you know you wouldn't see some of the stuff that he's been exposed to so yeah. did, does he kind of say oh after this i've done something like this it might really work well for you yeah, yeah. It, it definitely works like that yeah. a lot. And, um, it, it's the same thing we've worked on this vast number of projects as a company uh, but as a, uh, so as a company where we have six employees but as a group of people yeah, yeah, yeah. it's even the, 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 the projects we've worked on are even more Fast, really. Yeah. I think it's huge. Yeah. I think the other thing that's, that's interesting as well, talking about Rich, is that the guy who does loves the rock and roll side of things. <laughs> it's the projects that we do are far flung and they're all around the world. So mm. you really have to live this as a lifestyle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's not a job. You right. can't just kind of go and do the work nine to five uh, in an office in, in yeah. South Shields. It's not about that. It's a lifestyle. So everybody throws themselves completely into a project, sure. travels around the world. Yeah, yeah. You, know, you know, you can go off on a project where you, you, you're somewhere in Korea on the other side of the world for six or seven weeks with this same team of people and it's, yeah. it's like a family. It's, yeah. it's like group. You're all rock and roll stars, aren't you really? You're living the dream, right? <laughs> yeah, but we tend to stay on the other side of the camera. <laughs> so, you know, like going back to it, when you first started the business and you, you did the Kevin Keegan thing and that sort of took you know other avenues. Did you ever get to the point where you maybe you won a bit of work or someone reached out to you and you thought, wow, I'm taking on a bit of a big project here, it's a bit scary, can I actually do that? Was there any imposter syndrome in the early days that kind of... Yeah, there, there was a bit, but um, I mean, we were very confident in, in what we do. Yeah. So uh, when we got some big projects um, and it went from kind of 
a, a number of largish projects to one or two really big ones, yeah, yeah. So, um, and then there were lots of issues, financing issues and so on. Yeah, yeah. From from a from a technology point of view, we have the confidence sure. in, in what we do to to make it happen. Yeah, uh, and quite often, really, in this industry, somebody will say to you, "Well, this is the creative concept. What what I want to do is is this." And they'll describe it in a, in a, in a quite a high level way. Yeah. And then they're kind of asking you, so can you engineer that? How, yes. how can you make it work? And more often than not, you, clearly you just say, yes, we, we can do it. Yeah. And of course, at the time you might not know how to do it. But you, <laughs> that's the challenge. You've you got to yeah. find, find a way to make it happen. Mm -hmm. It's interesting when you've got a specialism like you, and then you have a business as well, that you almost have to learn the business side of the world, you know, the commercial side of it, as you say, the finances, yeah. the payment terms, and that sort of stuff. How do you do? How do you do that with obviously your engineering expertise, and then oh, I've got to have a business head as well. Yeah, well, that, we talk about this a lot actually, because for me, the, the business is about doing the work. It's about doing great projects yeah. and about um, doing all of that kind of engineering work. That's what I enjoy most. Yeah. For me, that's a perfect way to be. The, the business side is the bit that. You're exactly right. I kind of learned along the way. Yeah. Uh, but we're a small business, so you, you end up doing anything. Mm -hmm. So I just learned it really. Well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I wouldn't say I clearly I didn't go to business school or learn anything like that. You just learned it by doing. Yeah. On the job. It, uh, on the job. Yeah, yeah. And we do everything. You know, I was doing business this morning and uh, and doing invoicing. And, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Cool. And do proposals uh, to people at the same time. We're, we're sat as a team around uh, a bunch of computers trying to. Programs and systems test yeah. up, test uh, some new technology. Yeah. So it's a, it's a real mix. Yeah, this is not I, I guess you know the business is about surrounding yourself with good people. So you know, have you identified gaps in the business where you thought I need to bring someone in to do that bit? Or yeah, for sure we need to have. Like I say, we have a group <coughs> of people who are real experts uh, in the field that are out, essentially outside the business that we bring in. We need them. Yeah. But what's really clear is we need to have people in house all the time. Right. Who are also testing new things, testing oh, new okay. features, and yeah. uh, writing new bits of software, and, and, and really doing a bit of R and D. Yeah. Because um, it's only through doing that that we, we sort of stay out of the game. Yeah. Uh, from from a business perspective, we've managed to uh, keep it fairly small. We don't have a huge team of people just operating in the business. We've been managed to do it ourselves mm -hmm. between doing the engineering and both and operating the business. Yeah. Oh, with accounting teams and stuff. Yeah. It's interesting. You talked about R and D there and you know if, if I was I don't know, if I had a place out in Dubai for instance and I wanted to have water parks and stuff. Now of course I, I don't know what I don't know. So but I come you and just say, David, I just want like some fountain with some green stuff happening, you know, like right, okay, let me think about the art of the possible then. So is that kind of what you do? Yeah, quite quite often it is. I mean we, we do quite specific things in, in, the, in the work that we do, so, and we tend to be part of a bigger team. So, you know, we work on shows where there are um, huge water fountains, uh, flame effects, pyrotechnics, okay. and so on. Yeah. But for the pyrotechnics, there's a specialist yeah. company who's dealing only with pyrotechnics. Yeah. And we look at how to control that, how to monitor their systems from our right. systems okay. and so on. For the water fountain systems, there's another company specialising in creating the pumps and the yeah. controls of that. And we work as part of that team. So we're controlling all of the equipment, we're monitoring all of the equipment, but we don't necessarily build all of the equipment. It's, yeah. it's, it's all supplies part of the mm -hmm. project team. But the good thing is when people ask us things like that, we can we can pull it together and yeah, generate yeah. the right people to, to make it happen. So in that example I gave there, which was very basic green stuff, <laughs> you know, if someone like it is quite basic and doesn't know, then that's your expertise. Is that table oh, look really cool? Uh, this, you know, you ever flip the other way where someone says, "What this, this," and they go like, "Wow, that, that's extreme," and then you've got to think, "Is that possible? I don't know." And yeah, like, yeah, it, it does happen, and I can say more often than not, we just say yes. You know, we, we'll <laughs> find a way to make it happen. Yeah, cool. But yeah, uh -huh. yeah, that, that definitely. <laughs> and, and, and do you find sometimes where you know you go to some countries that that's very affluent, there's lots of money slashing around? Do you think, wow, you know, they're really spending an obscene amount of money on something here? Is that yeah? Sometimes, uh, like I say, we, we've we've worked with really big companies, with smaller companies, uh, and but all around the different places, and yeah. some places, you know, we're 
in Dubai and Abu Dhabi, that there's clearly a lot of money yeah. uh, that's being spent over there. Uh, but generally speaking, it's spent, it's spent well right. to get the right people in. Yeah. Quite often, we're asked to come in as part of a design process in the first place. Okay. So uh, we, we kind of help with the whole design process. So yeah. it, it's usually that you're involved in that whole design process before we get to the point of spending the money. Yeah. So, yeah. so you can advise them on yeah. uh, where they should be looking and what they should be doing. Mm. What's, what's your favorite thing about them? I think this is probably with, without wanting to upset other people, <laughs> it would probably be the, the really big water shows right. um, and the big multimedia shows that we, we uh, do primarily with ETA Till in France. Yeah. Because that really is like an extended family. Yeah, know? right, okay. So that, that's the real fun thing. They, they are really like, like, a, like a mission. So yeah, yeah, yeah. From, from an initial design, creative design, which is part of their scope, uh, we come up with some uh, technological solution. We discuss it, we design it, we build it, and it's theirs. We ship it to the other side of the world. And then maybe we go to China, and then we go to Korea or Singapore. We go and we install it. We then commission it, and we have a team of people that are working out there. Really, so it's going from the initial concept of how we do the technology right the way through to sitting in the stand with thousands of people watching the show. Yeah. For me, that's the, the most fun mm-hmm. part of it. I would say the second thing is is the theme park work, which is really the other big part of our business. We love doing the theme park work, love doing the mm-hmm. parks, and working in parks like Universal and Disney is fantastic. Is that they really are the top of the top of the game, top yeah. of the industry. Yeah. Um, so to be able to involve, be involved in that is mm-hmm. great. And obviously, when when it goes off for the first time, sort of party and stuff like that. Yeah, this is normally a party. <laughs> yeah. uh, lots of people often ask when you're doing shows and things like that, are you nervous on the on the opening event? But I mean, really, you're not because it's been part of a, a design process that's been going on for years and years mm-hmm. and years, and it's then been rehearsed, and yeah. rehearsed, and rehearsed for months. So if something goes wrong on the first night. Particularly lucky because it's you have run the same show yeah. over and over and over again for, yeah. for months before that. So. And obviously if it's, a, if it's in a theme park and a theme park might run out of no nine to nine. Do you tend to work in June hours? Yeah, yeah whenever, whenever it needs to be. So yeah. a lot of the shows are nighttime based shows, so you yeah, need yeah. to work during the night. Because yeah. it's oh. with a projection onto water, it's with really light yeah. and it's with really so it needs to be dark. Yeah. The theme park stuff can it depends if it's a new theme park. Uh, you could be working during the day, um, but they, they tend to be those kind of builds that tend to be transfer our operations. Where, so as you said before, you have like the ride company working, building the ride, yeah. and they'll be in there for a fixed period of time, and yeah. it gets handed over to another team right. who are working on their, their sort of installation work, um, and they're handed over to a team who are working on the AV and the show systems like this. Yeah. So it's like a 24 hour mm. cycle. So you just have to adapt and, and you know, some of these really wild rides are they almost done in reverse. So, do, you know, might the sort of say, what can we do from an AV and experience point of view, and then put the right then she on the ride into that? Or I think it's a it's a mix of both. Yeah. So certainly, sometimes it's a creative concept, but there's only so far you can get it. There's no way to, to make it happen. Right. Okay. Um, but at the same time, we might say, well, this is a particular technology or a way of making a really stunning, immersive. Ride. So, how do we apply that to the yeah. to the IP of the ride? Sure. So, what's on trend right now then? Well, uh, that's a very good question. <laughs> uh, I don't know. In theme parks, the, there's um, the, there's a real push to use LED technology actually now in, in some of the rides. I, I don't know if you've visited some of the big parks like say Universal, Disney, and so on. A lot of them are very immersive AV rides with a lot of uh, projection systems in there, and there's a big move to to use LED systems instead of projection systems in places. So that's, that's certainly the technology that's yeah. and it's been around all the time. I think application of it in the We've got the UK, how's the UK doing with things like this? We've done actually we've done quite a few projects in the UK. Most of our work is out of for sure. We are building systems, we're exporting them, we're sending expertise to different parts of the world. Yeah. Um, but we have done quite a bit in the UK. We've just opened the uh, in parts of a team that's opened a, a vista centre for a really large whiskey brand. And, and <laughs> Is that you hiding the whiskey brand there? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm yeah. not going to say it for you. But it's, I mean, that's a fabulous attraction. Is it? Uh, we worked uh, with a company called BRC from, um, from the US, who are a really big production company. 
and it, it's it's a really great project. It's a whiskey brand visitor centre that's uh, up in Edinburgh on Prince's Street. That's open there, quite a historic building at that point. And we did the show control uh, systems for that and the software that runs it. Yeah, and it's it's really quite interesting. It's it's kind of a cross between a museum and a, and a interactive show and some whiskey testing as well. What, why would that particular company want that? It's I think it's really promoting their brand right. um, primarily. I, I, it's not really there as a as a means of, of selling. Yes, it's, yeah, yeah. it's a it's a brand promotion exercise. Yeah, right, okay. And the place itself is it's in such an incredible place in Edinburgh, uh, which is a very heavy tourist spot. Yeah, um, it's a really great way. I think I'm going up next week. Any chance of a ticket? Yeah, you should, you should go. You should definitely go. Can you know, get us a little. Well, we'll see. Yeah, see what right, Good man. <laughs> um, it's on record, man. <laughs> <laughs> if there's any questions about David, anybody who wants to chat with David, be, be, uh, be sure to throw them in there. I'll pop up on screen. Well, that's really good that the UK is doing stuff. And I guess for you guys, it's a bit easier rather than travelling around. Yeah. Is the travelling a pain? Or do you enjoy it? Or I mean, obviously, you're worth it. Like, yes, it, it, it's not a pain. Uh, in fact, it's like I say, it's, it's part of your life. It's yeah. part of your lifestyle. So. Obviously, COVID had a, an impact on travel. There's no doubt yeah, about it. Yeah. And we were lucky in that sense that we had lots of projects online. We designed projects which were all UK based. We had the project in Edinburgh and, and a couple of other ones actually, similar projects uh, in Scotland. Yeah. But that, that bit can be, the COVID bit made it a bit of a challenge. But normally, uh, we were traveling all the time. So Newcastle Airport was like my, my yeah. second home, yeah. uh, flying in out, out of the country all the time. I think you you just get used to it. Sure. There's no stress. We used to I used to uh, travel off to uh, to China or to Abu Dhabi. Uh, in fact, Abu Dhabi we've, we've done so much work and we used to be travelling there regularly on the endless flight out. Yeah. And you you get up in the morning without a backpack and just casually throw everything in. Get yeah. picked up in a car, taken to the airport. Right. And, yeah. Uh, and off you go. It's yeah. It's really straightforward. Four other ducks back in there. Yeah. Yeah. We've just got used to it, so there's no hassle at all. Yeah. It's quite fun actually, it's quite fun uh -huh. to jump track yeah, yes. <laughs> parts of the world. So you know, let, let's touch on COVID, you know, how, how what was the impact there? Did you did you kind of learn new ways to interact with your team remotely or? Yeah, uh, we were working on quite a few projects. A number of them got delayed because of COVID, but okay. the, the physical work on site in the bill got delayed. Yeah. But every project we've done is still ongoing or it's, it's completed, but it, it, nothing ever got cancelled. What we did find though which we were doing anyway to a certain extent on different projects. We found uh, remote working did work for us. Okay. As in, we could be here in the UK in the office or at home, and we could set up systems so we could remote into control systems in Beijing and have a team of people working remotely from the UK. Okay, at unusual hours, but yeah, um, yeah. connected into systems there where we would have a camera set up in the workshops over in Beijing. Okay. We'd have a guy over there who <laughs> the systems and, and we'd be remoted in on computers oh, okay. testing software yeah. and, and, and testing systems. Yeah. So that kind of thing worked. I would say it takes, it's not a perfect solution, but okay. it's much easier in there. Yeah. Um, you can see the people, you can be face to face with the people, you can yeah. touch the equipment, but we made it work. Mm -hmm. um, and we have been doing that anyway for remote support for yeah. the systems. It just suddenly went from being a small thing like that. Yeah. And, right. and is it still there? Have you decided that, you know, from an economy? Point of view, just thought sort of actually we'll, we'll keep maybe 40% of that now. Or? Sometimes the client is, is asking us for that because potentially it's cheaper for yeah, them yeah. rather than shipping us around the world. But more often than not, we end up going out to do the work because you got a lot of the stuff you have to be there. And yeah. see it. We did a project in New York just before Christmas, which is a, a visitor center in New York, which was you can kind of go around with some immersive shows in it and a kind of museum aspect, and then there's a ride where you do a kind of flying through New York City. Right. So that was a really interesting project to be involved in, but we did a lot of that remotely. But at some point, we, we reached the point where we said, you know, we have to go there now, we have yeah. to actually be there. Uh -huh. uh, because you need to see what's on the projection screen of the real time live in front yeah, of yeah, to, yeah. to know that it's yeah. doing what you're expecting. And of course, you had to be flew through New York, you know, just to see what it's like physically. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Actually, it was <laughs> uh, luckily for me, I didn't go there. Oh, I went out there. Right. So. We've done some other projects in New York. That's a great place to go and stay. Actually. Yeah, excellent. There are some perks like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and here in, in South Shields, and it's um, it's funny to be chatting earlier on. We, we don't really see many people in the building sometimes because we're all so busy. So 
to and fro and so in, in terms of collaborations and stuff like that, do you do much in South Hindsight or is it really your expertise is just everywhere? Yeah, it's going all over the place. I mean, we're, we're using, uh, when we're building systems, it, it's using local suppliers yeah. of uh, equipment, yeah. uh, for sure. And we're using we're using lots of local teams to, to help deliver stuff. But we are kind of unusual in the sense where we've got this place in one Trinity Green. Nobody really knows. We, we don't really go out much and kind of promote ourselves and yeah. advertise what we do. Uh, because one project leads to another project, and that's how we've met landed and grown. But yeah, this, this building's huge, I and mean, there's all sorts of businesses in here, some of which we, we didn't know they existed, actually. Yeah. So I think one thing we need to do is spend some more time <laughs> in, in the building. <laughs> we've been in since 2014, just to find clients with other businesses. Right. It's interesting you say you go, you go from one project to the next to the next, so, so that means your team is busy all, all the time. Is there, a, is there a requirement to grow a bit because if there is you'll need more people or are you quite happy to maintain what's the plan yeah um we, we're always looking to to, to grow and expand yeah. it's difficult to find the right people sometimes that's one of the challenges we've got not just from a skills point of view but um from you need to find someone who's who really wants to work in this industry where you kind of throw your whole life at it like, like i say it's, it's quite an unusual way of being in the way of living yeah so we need to expand always, and we're always looking for, for new people to work. It's just trying to find the right people. Yeah, yeah, no, you, you did right. We we did a, um, a presentation event last night. Actually, we did a, um, a picture feature style. Right. So it's twenty slides in twenty seconds. You know, so you we present the business in like six minutes forty. Uh, we we did ten really very businesses. Next month, you need to do that if you're here because okay. you know you have some great slides. I'd imagine. Of, yeah. You know, of, of some of the installations you've, you've worked on it. And Misha just asked them actually, you know, what, what's that? What's your favourite project that you've worked on? That's a good question, actually. Um, we probably the one that really stands out actually. We worked on, and this was from a long time ago, it was from 2012, I think. Uh, we worked on a, a big water show in Korea for the World Expo that was there at the time. Uh, it was a project called Big O. You can see it on, on YouTube actually. Uh, it's, it's a really, really impressive installation with a huge kind of architectural structure with water fountains and flames and projection and so on. And I think that was probably one of my uh, one of my favourite projects. Aside from that really working, we did a lot of work in Orlando and some of the some of the lights so we worked on the Escape from Green Dots Bank Ride. Right. What was the new part of the Universal Park over there? And that was great. It's mm -hmm. like you're working with a really um, a really impressive team of uh, creatives on that. Yeah. I thought you'd say more, more than newer ones because I imagine that the tech and, and the capabilities change year on year. Yeah, it, it does. And some of the stuff we're doing now, uh, kind of stars, is, is leads on actually from the, yeah. from the thing I just yeah. described at Big O. Yeah. I, think, I think that was more a personal thing. I, I enjoyed yeah. the, the yeah. project and the place and the people. Yeah. But yeah, the, the technology is changing all the time. Yeah. The, the other stuff I really enjoy, and I know the, the team enjoy working on, is the, the big theme parks. So we're, we've been very lucky to have done. Not just so in Universal Orlando, for example, we're working on one ride, right? but we've worked on lots of parks where we were doing control systems pretty much every ride right in the park. So, like Ferrari World Abu Dhabi, we've done all of the show control systems for the whole park. Right. There's uh, two parks in Dubai, and Hollywood Park and Motion Gate Park, where it's the same. And then we worked in Universal Beijing, we didn't do it all, right? but we did so, something like uh, 14 rides, I think. In yeah, so that that's really good when you can not just do one small part, but do something and yeah, yeah. uh, do a monitoring system that's maintaining and monitoring the whole park. It's, uh, that, that's fun. How are you then? You know, it must be <laughs> it's so difficult. I think mean, it's yeah. obviously day rates and hours, and but where do you start? Yeah, it really depends on the project because we go from from design consulting uh, work to programming and custom software for specific clients who are already doing systems and hardware, yeah. to doing control system hardware, we supply that, to doing a full turnkey solution. Yeah. And so there's a there's a sort of scale and there's a way of doing it. Generally on a full turnkey solution it's it's a, it's a price for doing a full turnkey solution. <laughs> it's a price. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> I bet it is. <laughs> and it's kind of one price that, that, that covers everything. Yeah. But yeah, we'll do everything from that through to kind of 
our own rate of daily rates of yeah, yeah, yeah. guys being on site. Yeah. It just depends on the job really. And you know what these grand jobs are like and you know there might be kind of school creepage and it wouldn't be great if just did that though. Do you have to go with variations and go back and say, well, you can't do that, but it's going to be this much and this much? Yeah, uh, we do. It depends on the project as well, yeah. because generally speaking, if it's, if it's a big project where it's a kind of turnkey solution, we just want to make it work and we want to make it work well. Yeah. We're not really there to try and pinch every penny from, from the job. Uh, we want to deliver a great job and yeah. then we'll get another great job with yeah. the same client or another client. Yeah. Yeah rather than kind of approaching it and going for a cheap solution and trying to, to pull in every possible any on variation where you upset the client, it's kind yeah. of not the approach we go for and try to go the other way. Excellent. Um, but yeah, if, there's, if the scope changes, either we'll, we'll highlight and either just do it or we'll highlight and make a, a variation on it. Yeah. Um, or quite often we've been asked to do something quite small and by the end of it we've, we've been asked to do other parts of the control system yeah. or uh, other parts of the theme park that we originally weren't involved in. Yeah. So, and luckily, because we're a small company, we can adapt easily and sure. just make it happen. Yeah, it's funny because you are a small company, we see the passion in you then, you just said, like, sometimes we'll, you know, there is a little creep, we'll just do it. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes it, I mean, you have to kind of put that commercial on. You know, don't even go back to, you know, we should be charging for this lad. Yeah, we should do it. <laughs> there, there is that sometimes, yeah. and uh, you have to kind of find the right balance. Really. Yeah. Like I say, we, it's a small industry you work with the same people on lots of projects so we, we want to we want to be the nice guys we don't want to be too nice sometimes but uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, we want it to be a great solution and profitable of course yeah so what's next then all, all sorts at the moment uh, so we're, we're building a big system at the moment that's that's going to ship out to, to the far east which is a uh, another multimedia watershed it's top secret isn't it yeah, <laughs> I can see uh, you trying to choose your words wisely. Yeah. <laughs> so that's, but that's that's a really big system. So okay. uh, we're building that at the moment, and that's going to ship just before the summer. Yep. And then we should head out to that later in the year. There's quite a lot of new theme parks being built over in the US that we're going to Right. Okay. Um, which is fun. And then some more of the projects I could describe at the end are yeah. on the go as well. Yeah. And we're also, it, it, some of the projects we tend to be involved with it can, can go on for months or yeah. even years. So there's some things where we've been involved in some design consulting work yeah. and they're starting to come into, uh, into production. Yeah. Uh, so that starts to uh, come in as well. So, you know, what you do, your skill set, it's, you know, there's not so many of you across the globe that can do it. Did people approach you and say, can you do that? And you just go, well, no, well, oh, yes, but it's going to be December. Um, is there a way for you? Sometimes, okay. but like I say, more often than not, we can find a way to make it happen. If someone needs to do something quickly, okay. we can usually find a way to, to make it happen. Yeah. Um, because we have our core team and then we have a kind of extended team okay. of, of people that can work on things. But more often than not, they tend to be longer projects where you get involved early on. Yes. We do have issues sometimes where projects look like they're going to clash yeah. at time scale and time. Okay. But we've never had a, an issue yet. We've yeah. just managed to make it happen. Yeah. Projects never happen to a schedule that's planned. Yeah. So everybody's project never happens to a, pro a, 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 yeah. a schedule that's planned. So yeah. they all tend to slot in. Yeah. So that is my little goal. That will never happen. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it, but it, it always does happen, but it, it just happens at a different time. And generally yeah. speaking, I think you, you know you know what's really going to happen. Yeah. And you can you can. You can have an official schedule and then you can uh, yeah. manipulate your own schedule. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. So have you got the best job in the world? Then? Uh, uh, look, I wouldn't do anything else. Yeah. I wouldn't do anything else. Uh, so, yeah, yeah. Uh, I would say so. Excellent. People ask about, you know, when you retire, what would you do then? Yeah. I don't know. I think I'd really like to continue doing this forever. Maybe we can step back from doing some things and just stay on a really exciting project. Yeah, like, that would be a fun thing to do. Do you know how I'm exactly with you? But I love what I do, and I've got no interest in it. Stop. Maybe that might change, you know, but I don't know. Yeah, I've got no interest. You know, you see people like an exit strategy, and you know, kind of reverse engineer, like, well, like 65, is it? Yeah. Well, yeah, no, for me, it's fun. So yeah, yeah, exactly. I enjoy it. And like I said, one of the big things actually is, is with uh, the family. The nice thing about doing this is. Uh, we've got three kids and I've got a very supportive wife. <laughs> but you can kind of go off and, and do these these projects and you, I could say we might go off and do do something in the Far East for a period of six weeks at a time. 
But the good thing is you can then manage the rest of your time to have time with your yeah. family. Yeah. So we spend a lot of time in the summer in in Mallorca or in right. different locations. Excellent. Enjoying ourselves. Yeah, yeah. And, and you can you can manage the life to fit. It's yeah. not all crazy work all the time. Yeah. Excellent. I think because of that we've had we've had a, a good lifestyle with our kids growing up. Yeah. We've spent more good time with the family than I think we would have done if we were working in more structured nine to five. Yes. Even though we're trying to run the business at the same time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Excellent. That's really interesting. Um, I think I'm saturated with questions. I'm from audience, yeah, haven't I? And I know people who are watching this on catch up wishing that they'd asked you questions. So is there anything that I haven't asked you that you might want to share? Uh no, I don't think so. I think no. I've covered a lot really. Well have indeed, yeah. <laughs> so I'd love you to do a presentation for us actually because I, I, we had that little video earlier on, but I think you must have some great pictures. Yeah, we we we've got some good stuff and we've worked on on some amazing projects. Yeah. To be honest, sometimes you forget what you've worked on. I can yeah, so you go back to it and you review all of the projects <laughs> you've worked on. Um, and there's a lot. So. How many do you think you've done? I have no idea. Uh, if you talk about individual systems, as I say, in, in, the, in the UAE alone, we've got Warner Brothers theme park, Abu Dhabi, Froyo and Abu Dhabi, and two Dubai park theme parks where we have control systems on every ride when we get those parks. Yeah. So there's got to be over 100 systems yeah, yeah, yeah. just over there. Uh -huh. And then all of the other show systems, I mean, it must be, must be two or three hundred yeah. individual systems since we when you hand them over, I said I would ask any more questions, I would still ask some questions. When you hand them over, is there a maintenance team that can then yeah. turn it going forward? Yeah, generally our, our objective is to is to design it well, engineer it well, yeah. and uh, do a, a good job of handing it over and training yeah. the, the maintenance teams that will. Yeah. Some projects we were asked to uh, to have some kind of maintenance contract right. with the end client, which we've done, but more often than not it's better to, to develop a system that can be handed over to the client yeah. and they, they can yeah. them. That's our our objective really is to, as a business is to make a great project, complete it, be sure that everybody's happy with it, hand it over yeah. and then let them let them run with it. Rather than trying to, you know, maintain a, a finger in every pie right no, 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 no. It's, it's messy, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Get but, it, get out. But we are involved and then generally speaking if the client has some needs or they want to change something or have something new, yeah. they come back to us and ask us to do that to yeah. set a separate piece of work. Cool. Good, so well, well, thanks for your time. Um, it's been good to actually finally have a chat after <laughs> all these years that have been in the building and we haven't known about each other. So maybe I'll we'll do it again when you've got other news that you can share because you've got top secret stuff going on. Yeah, yeah, excellent. Yeah, good stuff. Brilliant, thanks for your time. Um, thanks everyone for watching. Um, we, I'm not sure what our next one is, but uh, if you want a particular topic or if you've got any questions or you've got any people that you'd like to see interviewed, please reach out. Um, do me a favor. Click like or love on this and, and share it out so um, you know we can reach more people than South Kind Time and maybe further afield. You know, let 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 people know that we're here because uh, as we just said there, you know, sometimes we're a bit, you know, a bit insular and we're not Yeah, yeah, it's, a lot lots of people say I've never knew your business was here at least inside shares it's uh, it's unusual. <laughs> it is. Um, okay, so um, thanks very much for watching and we'll see you next time.